Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for um, making time and um, to listen to me to talk about future of software testing using machine learning and, and AI. My name is Zolani, and it's such a privilege and honor to be um, one of the speakers in this event. So uh, let's get in to see uh, what will be the agenda of today. Right, so uh, this is just a summary of like what I'll be taking you uh, today. So um, first of all, I think before we move any further, um, I'm sure you'll begin to understand or to see uh, who's speaking. So I'll be giving a little bit of background about myself. I'll be giving a little bit of intro about uh, uh, on AI and machine learning, and also looking at how can we incorporate uh, machine learning and AI into, into QA using uh, concept and examples, um, right? And also kind of like to prove a value and to why do we need machine learning and AI in software testing? And of course, doing a summary of, of everything as a conclusion, right? Let's get, let's get to it, right? So that's myself there. Um, Right, uh, don't smile a lot, but sometimes I do smile. Um, so this is just a snippet about myself. Uh, my name is Olani Khaike, very passionate about software testing. So my experience is um, over 12 years experience into doing testing um, and also as well being part of the software development space started as a dev back in the days. Um, at, at this moment, currently, uh, I work for ShopRite Group of Companies, part of their test center um, for excellence, TCOE, right? Outside work, talk outside work. Outside work, um, I like um, outdoors, go, going out, um, being with friends, and, um, and, and yeah, and just being um, a super cool dad to my 10 year old son, and, uh, um, you know, so spending time with my dog as well. Right, so let's get into it, right? So before we start with anything, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's look at this. So I've got different objects on, on just one puzzle, if I, would, if I would say it. So if you're looking at that, if I would say go and group those, um, those objects, right? So how would you group them? How would you identify in terms of like grouping them, right? I'm sure already you've got some answers. You, I think the best thing, um, really is just to look at certain features that are common and then trying to segment them nicely and all of that. But some, they might be similar. So you might get a little bit tricky, right? Let's, let's go into to, to the next one. This is just round one. The clown two is actually easier than the round one. So yeah, let's be from, from, from the previous slide. So things are made, made a little bit easier now where you're actually looking at one object. So of course that kind of like eliminated all other objects. So you're looking probably a row one and a row two, right? So um, I'm sure you can pick it up where it kind of like belongs. So that was just, you know, because um, AI, AI kind of like use similar principles as well. Right, let's get deeper. So a little bit of intro, right? About what I'll be doing today as mentioned before. So if you notice um, AI, AI has done a lot of wonderful things in terms of like how it's been implemented along, um, along these years and there's still gonna be a lot of transformation around it. AI definitely will transform software testing and, test, and testers make, usually make uh, quicker judgments based on data, based on data uh, in terms of like what need to be achieved and, and all of that, um, right? So today I'll just be demonstrating on how AI machine learning is directly applicable in, 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 in testing, uh, in all aspects of testing, actually, right? From your manual testing, functional, non-functional, and, and, and all of that. So if you're looking at now, there's already a strong focus on, 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 on quality, and there's still going to be more focus on quality, just to make sure that, you know, uh, customers uh, have a good experience, you know, so that businesses can be, can do well and better, right? Right. Number one, uh, let's, let's look at the key differences between AI and machine learning, right? You'll probably be asking yourself, what are the big uh, main differences there? In order to, I know some of you might, of course, be, be aware uh, or know those. So let's first look at their AI. So simply put, so 
AI is an ability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior. Okay, it's simple and easy as that, right? Let's look at the main goal for, for that. So AI goal really is to, um, is to make a smart computer system um, like humans to solve complex problems, right? So things to be done much smarter and quicker now um, using computer systems. Right, and also AI system is uh, is more concerned about maximizing uh, the chances of success, you know, um, than taking more risk. So let's look at machine learning. Right, machine learning um, it's more also in line with with AI, but now the only difference this is just an application of of artificial intelligence that will allow a system automatically to learn and improve from. From experience, there are ways to do this. You can actually, um, you know, use it through data, and then it kind of like extend from from, from that, uh, because you're actually teaching a bot how to behave and, and all of that, and then gain results from that. Let's look at the goals. Let's look at the goals. The goals of machine learning is to allow machines to learn from data, as mentioned before, and from data so that they can give accurate output. Machine learning is more is mainly concerned about accuracy. And patterns, of course, from the data that you fit it, um, right? So let's let's move on to the next slide. So now, so what I'm trying to do now is um, to give reasons and examples, and and uh, yeah, how, how how can we then now incorporate machine learning, AI into QA, right? So by answering these main three questions, right, or having these questions in mind. What 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 if software software could learn to test itself? That would be great, right? But maybe you might answer asking yourself questions: What's going to happen with manual testers? There's no way that you can replace manual testers, but that this can make things a little bit better. But again, I'll be giving examples. What if software could automatically track and eliminate bugs? That would be awesome. That would be great in terms of productivity, in terms of like getting. A lot of features more to production and having more trust um, on AI, right? Will AI and machine learning kill software testing? Hmm, we'll see. Let's get into it, right? So um, some of some of you in the um, today here yeah, might be asking yourself questions. Maybe you're not exposed into software testing. What software testing is all about? What is software testing? So software testing is also. Um, um, it's also a life cycle within, within software development. It's got its own activities that need to be achieved with, with an objective of verifying you know, um, the requirements and uh, making sure that we've got less difference. It might be a little bit debatable, it might be a little bit tough to have 100% uh, bug-free software um, because we've got a lot of integration, environments are different from low environment to production, but that's not the point, right? So if you're looking at, at your inputs to processing to your output, right? So of course, there's, this comes with stages. There's your test analysis and planning. So where you've got your artifacts there, the test artifacts, test cases, test data. And of course, that will be you using your requirements spec in, in order for you to have those, uh, knowing what you're testing, right? And then, Furthermore, the process you had, you need to, to go and execute, making sure that everything works as best spec. There's a process to do that. And um, of course, there will be um, a defect management cycle that you have to do, logging defects, making sure they're fixed um, within specified sprints and all of that, depending on, on the setup of the team. Right, and running your regression, depending on the majority of your testing, automation regression, right, your nitro beads and nightly builds and, and all of that. So you're looking at now your output. So output, of course, is going to be the results of whatever you'll be doing. And also having your own uh, artifacts, your, your test closure reports, defect reports, and depending on your environment, you know, um, in your environment. But the, the, the main goal is to verify your inputs uh, as, 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 as expectations, you know, compared to, 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 your, to your requirements back, right? Enough about software testing. Let's get in more to interesting stuff, right? Let's get into this. So you've seen that software testing slide. 
So now, then now, how do we then use AI to achieve the whole flow that I gave from input to output, right? So what makes it more trickier, the biggest differentiator now? So you're no longer looking at your input straight through that end-to-end -end to output, right? So now you're looking at that middle layer, which is, if you still remember the previous slide, that was processing. So now you can find different permutations into, into that, right? In terms of like, there's a, there's a lot of um, mapped end-to-end -end scenarios that you might get to get to, to the output, but there might be different ways to get to them. Right, so which is still with the, with your with your normal testing, you can still do it, but uh, the coverage gets more better because you 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 get to to all the mostly to most of the um, permutations, right? So this is just this is just a, a graphical presentation of like what I'm trying to explain using AI, right? So. AI also make use of your element selection, which is this would something that you would see from your traditional tools like your Selenium, uh, UFT, Karate, there's more even better ones like, like your uh, Catalon and all of that where they actually grab your image, grab your elements from, from your application, right? And then you, it's, it's a way to identify those elements and then writing your script and rerunning them and all of that. And times if the element name changes, then your script don't run anymore. You have to run that and, uh, you know, uh, keep on improving your script and, and all of that. So it becomes at times maintenance heavy, right? So AI can also, does also have that component, um, you know, which is element selection. This is just an example here of like login screen that have, of course, different, um, you know, elements on the screen, the login button, sign in, uh, text box and, and all of that. So you can, you know, use that to kind of like to write your script and then yeah so let's look at what ai is more popular for so yeah this is test sequencing so test sequencing as you can see here this goes back to the exercise that we did on the second slide so when we look at um, different fruit and different those objects and trying to identify them uh, to clean up from from the big group right so again uh, so here we, we were navigating around, uh, we we're navigating to the shopping cart and rewards, right? So of course the shopping cart might have different images and all of that. So I, if you're gonna see something, let's say for this, it's green, slightly smaller, the font is, the, the font is slightly small on that icon there, all of that, will your test fail? No, yes. Definitely, we don't want it to fail because it's actually a, semi, it's, it's, it's a similar icon that will get you to the shopping cart, right? So this is just more examples in, in all of that, you know? So are you more of like training your board to navigate to that icon in different ways of shape, you know? So the, the mechanism that the board will use, it's app graph. It's more of like, again, this goes back to here. Yeah, it's again saying, um, you know, there are different ways to get to that point there. So it's either you can go this way, either you can go there first and going the other way, and even, or you can go directly here and stuff like that. There will be a lot of limitation what you can do using app graph. So this kind of like links together. So that is just the example that I was trying to, to build um, earlier on. So of course, this can build up even more. You can do things like your QR codes where you're reading data where you're reading data from, from QR code and then um, you know, processing that in different ways, depending on like what you want to achieve. For example, like let's say an online institution during this pandemic. So where they take applications online um, and then they store these QR codes and then use that data for something else, depending on the faculty that you actually, the students are applying to. That is just one example. Right, let's look at, if you still remember, when I was talking about machine learning, I did mention that machine learning got different learning tactics, uh, but um, the idea is not to go deeper into, into the learning tactics, but it's just to um, give you a picture about what they're all about, right? So firstly, there's uh, supervised, supervised, um, um, 
allows you to collect data or to produce uh, data, uh, produce data output from the previous experience. This is what also I mentioned earlier on about, about um, you know, machine learning, when I was explaining machine learning. So you can, can do that. Another option what you can do is um, unsupervised, which is also a, which is also a machine learning technique uh, uh, where you don't need to supervise the model. So it's not dependent on data at all. Um, right, so you may be, might, may be asking yourself questions. So now as you're learning, what happens in cases where you've got your edge cases, uh, will the board now understand all of that? And, you know, uh, for exa example, mobile testing, mobile testing, um, uh, mobile testing with incoming phone call where you need to simulate, maybe not simulate, have uh, running on a proper network, someone calling you in um, at a certain network speed and, and, and all of that. What happens in those scenarios like that? But of course, that that's dependent on the hardware. So it gets a little bit trickier, but there are ways to do it. So let's touch, just touch on one. So now you've got a combination of human and, and AI um, as mentioned before, right? So that more it's like a very edge case scenario. So the um, the scenarios or your test pack that that was that was building up in terms of your regression pack and all of that. So once that gets more expanded, it kind of like helps you because you create more um, different uh, permutations that can be mapped together to bring you more better coverage. So that's that's the Best way to explain it. So, but I'll, I'll get more deeper into this when I give more examples with tools and, and, and all of that. But that's just the snippet of it, right? And uh, performance testing. Maybe you might be asking. So, how do we handle performance testing? So, uh, a board keeps track of performance timing every time it performs an activity or an event. So, if then you want to compile of that, let's say you've got the whole end-to-end -end flow. So, you want to compile all, all the different activities all the flow so you can bulk that up and then look at your timings and then you can see how much is it how long does it take to perform certain events and all of that it's quite flexible depending on like how would you like to configure it right right now let's look at um i'm sure um this is the most testers nightmare where you have to create your own test data depending on what form or like can be uh, form from a web page, APIs, and, and all of that. So there's there's a way actually AI yeah, can assist you with this. So uh, generating data, so it's more generative model. So um, there's, there's uh, Diony Santiago uh, works for Ultimate Software. Um, it's really, it's actually a biggest pioneer for this. I wrote a lot of white papers around this and a lot of um, examples online, so you can go and check more around that. Very, very interesting. And recently, there's um, an example that he actually used with um, clustering logs from production and using cluster, clustering um, harness.io. So, so in a testing point of view, um, you can actually capture all of that data within seconds, you know, depending on like what, what you're going to use it for. And also, for sure, you can get a little bit um, interesting and complex where you want to have your automated data that you need to, to mask it and also to um, comply with POPI and, and all of that. So it gets a little bit tricky, but um, but you can still capture your data and then you write those rules depending on like, what you want to do rather than capturing the, the data manually and that can be time consuming, right? So of course, the, the last one I would like to touch on is uh, competitive tracking. So competitive tra tracking, very similar to A-B testing. A-B testing where at times you have like two separated models. You're not sure which one will actually add more results. Uh, into the market, so we decide to deploy them both and then see which one will perform. So this is a very good marketing uh, way to see, uh, you know, which one will give you more results. So, but now with an AI, AI can do that better and even smarter way. Um, it can check on your competitive intelligence and then drive results for you. For example, where you can go in production. So in production, go. I'm going to use an example of airline. Airline is quite a very competitive industry. So um, there might be a certain season where 
um, tickets are more, um, you know, they're selling more flight tickets and then, but they want to drive traffic more closer to their side. We would obviously love to see what's happening on that side and with our competitors and then have more better ways in terms of like how they can improve their platforms and all of that. You can make use of AI. Of course, this comes with limitations, security limitations and, and all of that. But, but yeah, that's what competitive tracking is all about. And then like now let's get more practical in terms of like what's being used out there um, with, uh, with the big six, right? Uh, in terms of AI and machine learning. Firstly, let's look at Amazon, what Amazon has, has done in the past uh, that has made them, you know, different, you know, with uh, machine learning. So they've used an algorithm to sort out, to sort fruit. Um, this is quite popular. It's, there's a lot of white papers around it as well. Um, uh, the warehouses. A good example is one that I've used before, but uh, Amazon has kind of like done that um, it's all automated with their boards. Right, so let's look at Twitter. So Twitter does this deep neural network system to find out which users want to see what type of content and, and all of that. And then it's got this well, well thought designed uh, ranked uh, in order in terms of like what you want to see. I'm sure some of you have seen that. So that makes use of AI as well. Um, the way it tracks or uh, consider things like your likes, tweets, content, user interaction, um, that they keep, you see what you want to see. All right, let's look at Uber. Um, with Uber, they've also used AI in so many ways, but I'm just picking up one example. So improving their uh, location accuracy with sensing and perception, you know, uh, in terms of like their pickups, um, you know, drop off points um, and, and all of that. So they be, became more accurate as uh, compared to the past uh, five years or so. Right, let's look at Facebook. Quite an interesting one. So Facebook now, they've done also, they've implemented AI in so many ways. They, they've got a big community for AI um, as well. You know, within that develop, development community, I was just scraping online looking at that. So um, they've done, they've actually introduced a feature where uh, they can understand what's going on in your photos and um, you know and then drive news feeds uh, around that um, and also of course with ads and, and all those ad campaigns. Uh, IBM as mentioned before similar to um, the QR code uh, they've also implemented way where um, in fact you can in extract information from from pictures um, yeah but um, it's more interesting where, where you actually go look at it. So we look at Netflix. Netflix, you would notice there's that recommendation system based on like what you watch, based on your experience and like what you're doing and all this. So they've implemented AI in that regard. So let's let's get now a little bit more technical into, into testing in terms of like how do you then enable all of this, what I was talking about in terms of practicality. So the number of tools that you can use. So there's one that's quite popular that is kind of like stand out for me, totally AI based. Um, it helps you to do your end to end, as I mentioned before, with uh, the, when I was talking about inputs and outputs and different permutations in that middle layer. So te um, uh, testing can help you quite well with that. And also there's a different stack as well that you can also consider, which is Apply Tools. So Apply Tools for it's got a strong focus on visuals. So where you do your visual operation. So this of course depend on your, on your industry. So where you can compare images, it goes down into uh, um, checking even small uh, pixels and then it will fail and tell you which image um, it saw as a difference and, and, and all of that. So it's quite interesting in that manner rather than a human being going and, and going and looking and all of that. So um, I've seen this working with a lot of uh, your advertising agencies where they do a lot of like ad campaigns and, and all of that. And uh, it's more of like, uh, those fleshy websites and you can do it also with slots gaming uh, where it's so image uh, driven with your slots when you tap your spin images will roll and then 
see if like in top in, in your reels, if like those images are matching and all of that, if they were sliced correctly, but it, as a manual tester, it will be difficult for you to, to, to see that, you know? So your uh, visual regression, visual testing, we we'll do, we'll do all of that. And then maybe also some of you might be asking yourself a question, um, how does RPA then fits into to all of this? So in the simple terms, you know, AI is just like an umbrella term for all of those technologies, like your example also with RPA. With RPA. Um, so the objective is, is the same. RPA teaches your, your robots how to, to handle thinking tasks, you know, and insert um, AI into, into what's easily leveraged learning loop and exactly how I mentioned before, if we're looking at the goals for AI, uh, on that, I think on that slide four. And there's many more tools that you can consider. There's source labs, there's IA, and many more in terms of like, depending on your requirements and what you want to achieve. Right. So let's look, let's look at this now from, from all this journey that I've been taking you through in terms of machine learning and AI uh, from, from what is it and what are the differences between the two and to how it will fit into testing. Let's look at why do we need machine learning and AI in software testing? Big question, right? So let's look at this. So if you notice, right, so the more you build more features and you, you kind of like integrate into your software, the more you've got your, your, your coverage, um, the complexity gets more, um, you know, um, challenging in terms of like what you need to consider in terms of like your test levels, <clears throat> your, your um, functional testing. Feature testing can be easily be done because you know uh, what, <clears throat> what feature you're actually introducing. Right, so, but you're actually building on top of existing functions. You can still do your regression, um, you know, um, you know, performance testing, you know, it gets more affected, especially <clears throat> depending how often do you do actually um, build or deploy to production, right? So with, with, with AI, so you can still build all of those um, features, but the productivity in terms of your tests will still <clears throat> remain the same. Right, in terms of like what you get from your test when you run them compared to your traditional automation. Of course, this depends on like how it was implemented and what uh, you know, tool stack you've got and all of that, but this can easily be achieved to, to, to limit the risk um, of having that complexity, you know, within when you're running your test, if you add more, more features, right? So now um, it's, yeah, it gets me to the last um, uh, page of my, of my slide, right? just summarizing of like what I've been talking about today, uh, the key things, uh, just uh, to tie it back to um, some of the slides. So basically a AI aims at making testing smarter and more efficient. I think that come across broadly and, and easy. And uh, AI and machine learning apply reasoning and and problem solving to automate and improve testing. I think that's also another point. Um, AI, in software, AI in software testing helps to reduce time consuming manual testing so teams can focus on more complex tasks like creating innovative new features, innovative new features. For example, what I mentioned earlier on with um, some of the board being an extension, being an extension of a human being. I think there's also another learning technique that I've mentioned earlier on. So uh, a board can, uh, can focus on those mundane repetitive tasks, and then a human being can um, focus more on, um, on the human thinking activities to make life much better in terms of like uh, team dynamics, collaboration, making things better and, and all of that. So, and also let's, let's look at another point, which is, um, AI can change software testing, which can, um, you know, traditionally be a costly and time consuming process, correct? So for example, the type of difference to find in production depend also uh, because of the complexity, because the times don't always anticipate the type of issue we're going to get on production, number of reasons, the, envir the environment um, uh, is actually not the same compared to product environment not being the same with the lower environments, um, test data, the way um, 
the databases are actually being orchestrated totally different from the lower environment. Um, you know, so we don't anticipate uh, some of, of, of the challenges that we've got in testing uh, because of like many reasons, uh, budget constraints in terms of like uh, for environment and uh, some of the things that maybe might be relating to technical debt, right? So let's look at the last one. By allowing uh, machine learning to learn um, uh, code base and automatically, and automatically generate and run tests, um, so testers um, are free to focus on their efforts elsewhere uh, while helping developers to, uh, to deliver more reliable software with fewer bugs. This is exactly similar to the point that I just made uh, with innovative uh, you know, involvement for testers. But now this is the different view where now we can focus on, on things like you know, working much better with the team, uh, more focusing on agility process driven um, items, um, you know, how can we make things better in terms of like creating framework that will make all processes much better, right? So this is just um, a slide that puts things together in terms of referencing for mainly around um, the IA um, projects or activities with, um, with the big six. I think that was slide seven. I'd also like to close this with um, with a quote from uh, my, from Michael Trenchantin. Um, I actually like this quote. It reads as follows: "I rather I'd rather see artificial intelligence than no intelligence," which is great. You know, so um, uh, I love that. Uh, the end, and uh, thank you all. And um, I leave it with with one note uh, that to say. Um, I know that there might be some um, some questions, so uh, feel feel free to meet me at the at the main room for for questions. I'm sure you will see all of those uh, rules in terms of like how do we do that. Uh, thank you all. Have a great day. Bye.